What is up y'all? Welcome back and welcome to a fresh top shelf video. I love doing a top shelf video because well first of all it's a really good excuse to clean this room up which I did. I actually did the darn thing this morning and cleared this room out. It is no longer the hoarder's den that it was. Everything is back in storage. But if you are unfamiliar with my Top Shelf series, the premise of it is that when I do that big cleanup every single time, after I have been testing and just like chucking things because that's my process, I save the things that I don't want to put back into storage because I'm too excited about them. Like they're the things that I know that if I put them back, I would just pull them back out again to keep using them because I love them that much. And we have all of the categories today. I have skincare, I have hair care, and I have makeup and body care. So it's not just a favorites video because it could be the same products every single time ostensibly, but I tend to do them kind of quarterly seasonally because that's when there's a noticeable change in my routine. So that's what we're gonna be going through today. You get to see what I actually am using, like what I'm truly loving. And I surprise myself sometimes too, when I'm cleaning up and I'm like, oh, actually, that can go back in the drawer, like that's fine. Like I would have thought when I started using it and fell passionately in love with a certain thing like that it would be top shelf for me and some of them just don't make the cut. So even though this is an enormous amount of stuff and we might have to do it in installments because I do have to record the podcast in like an hour, <laughs> it is still a ruthless curation in my opinion, especially, you know, by scale to the rest of my collection. But before we jump into the top shelf, I want to talk to y'all about today's sponsor. I am so excited today to be working again with Current Body. Current Body is one of my favorite companies to work with because they specialize in beauty devices. I am such a beauty device girly. Give me all the red light therapy. I think it makes such a huge difference in my routine and I have been using their LED face mask for a long time now. But what I've also been using for a long time now and I haven't had the chance to talk about is their neck and deck mask. And it looks like what it is, right? It is the shape of your neck and your decollete. It attaches around your neck like this. It's completely like unimposing to wear. I do it while I'm reading or talking to friends or something in bed at night. Like <laughs> it's just something that's really not in my way. And when you turn her on, I'll try not to blind y'all here. Yeah. Just got all your little red lights there and it cycles for 10 minutes, just like the face mask does. I do wear them both at the same time when I look like I'm trying to be in Daft Punk, but you know that that's my vibe anyway. And I've noticed a huge difference in the appearance of my neck and my decollete. It's something that is very easily neglected when we're talking about like our skincare routines and things like that, because I mean, honestly, just from a practical standpoint, when you're talking about applying all of your cleansers and serums and stuff like that to your face, getting them on your neck and washing things off into the sink and not, you know, completely soaking your pajamas. It's an issue of practicality and sometimes we just don't give as much attention to this area as we should, right? And so I have been putting more attention towards that in terms of exfoliation and making sure my serums go all the way down and things like that. But this is just such a huge change maker for me, especially because it's so easy to integrate into my routine. So any issues that I might have had in my decollete area include things like, you know, anti-aging concerns, but also like irritation and breakouts. I do a lot of hot yoga, the sweat, the whatever, you know, you get clogged pores. I'm a picker. There tends to be irritation and LED light stands for light emitting diode. It stimulates the production of new collagen. It calms any redness and irritation and encouraging the collagen production basically increases firmness. It helps with fine lines. It's just going to make the skin look glowing and more youthful. And I want that. And so for such an easy thing, it's just like one step in the evening that literally takes actually like no true time commitment. It makes all the difference in the world. I'm obsessed with it. So if y'all are interested in checking this out and I highly recommend that you do, you can use my code khaki in the link down below and it will get 15% off on current body skin, all of their devices, as well as $50 off of the neck and deck device specifically. So definitely check it out if you haven't already. And I wanna thank Current Body for partnering with me for this portion of today's video. So let's go ahead and jump into the rest of my top shelf. Ooh, girl, the makeup that I have on my face right now, I'm feeling really cute. I'm just feeling really cute. I just, I like went full Nicolette Panisi on my eyeliner. Actually, she does even more than this. Like she has, the wing gift, you know, but still, I'm feeling very, feeling very cute. Okay, so let's start with hair care, because why not? New to my routine, I'm not sure that I got a chance to talk about it in my last Top Shelf video, but maybe I did, I don't remember. Either way, we're gonna talk about Crown Affair real quick, because these two things have been really changing my life. Actually, tomorrow I'm getting my first professional haircut since the pandemic. 
Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Yeah, the, the ends are crunchy, but what has been helping with my crunchy ends, y'all, is, and you can tell, because I'm really going through it. This is the leave-in conditioner from Crown Affair, and I use like one or two pumps of this, either on wet hair or dry hair, before I style it, and it will really, really help with like the crunchy ends. I lost a lot of hair, because I was having a stressful moment earlier this year. And I, as a result, tie my hair back a lot, like while it's wet, which is, you know, not good form, right? Because the ends get kind of caught up in the hair tie and it just wears them out faster. And I've been trimming my own hair for, like I said, years. So I could use all the help that I could get. They did send me this. I reached out to them on Shop My Shelf and they were kind enough to send this to me and I'm powering through it. There's just a lot in the bottle and it's so pleasing. What a pleasing, container, isn't it? Ooh, I don't know what it is about it, but mm, just feels like luxury. And this is a freaking game changer. Okay. So I started doing the cute slick back bun, right? And I reached out to a couple of my friends, you know, and I was like, what products do you use? And I got started on like a drugstore gel or whatever. And I was like, okay, I like the vibe, but y'all know me. I need the upgrade. <laughs> it's just who I am and this is the this is the upgrade so I got a lot of ads for it and I bought this with my own money on Sephora so this is the finishing gel and what makes this unique what makes this unique y'all is that you know a lot of gels you put in and like they'll kind of stay crunchy or your hair will stay flat or whatever after you like undo your hair later this as long as you don't use like a palm full of it if you just use like a little you know pea size or whatever it holds everything down but once it's dry and you're done with that hairstyle it'll just brush back out and your hair is soft again i'm not gonna say you're gonna be able to like reclaim every millimeter of volume you had before that but it is not gonna weigh the hair down unnecessarily it is really cool stuff like i'm very very surprised at how soft it leaves your hair while also having really great hold while it's working i love it i love it i love it i love it so that is definitely worth a mention here is a skincare product that i i don't want to say i underestimated it but i there was like a moment in, when i was integrating it into my routine where i was like is this silly <laughs> Am I just being silly? Do I just like this delivery system and like the bottle and like maybe that's why I'm into it? No, this is great. And it's it's gonna be a repurchase. It's almost empty. It's gonna be a repurchase. But this is the Sika Pear Facial Calming Mist from Dr. Jart. So Sika is short for Centella Asiatica. It's what it's short for. And it's got the calming benefits of all of that Centella. And so when you have irritation or I don't know, stuff that happens from using actives like a really strong retinol like I use right now. This is just such especially oh if you're using like a really intense active like a retinol or something I'm a big fan of the sandwiching method as you're getting your skin used to that kind of thing in your routine and this is a really great first layer for the sandwiching routine. It like gives your skin this like thin barrier that's not gonna like dilute your actives or whatever but like a thin barrier that's actually doing something it's like the centella is an incredibly calming ingredient for your skin and so it's like okay that's what my skin sees first and then I'm gonna put the retinol on top of it and then I can put my moisturizers on there and it's just gonna help your skin like not be totally shocked and overwhelmed I don't know if that's science I don't know I didn't make that up <laughs> I'm adapting things that I've heard from other ostensibly reputable sources on the internet, but the sandwiching method is supposed to help your skin get used to and tolerate retinols and things like that better long term. So I use retinol every single night. <laughs> My skin's a tunnel broad and putting this on first makes all the difference in the world and it's pretty. Like you spray it on your face and it just has a nice glycerin-y look to it. It's just, just pretty. I like it. Ooh, glycerin, that reminds me. Hang on. Hi. I grabbed a couple of other things that are very glycerin centric that have been really awesome in my routine. So something that I don't, I guess I think about hard enough is cleansers and using cleansers that are not doing any harm in terms of stripping your moisture barrier. Like I always think that I am, but like I switched away from milky jelly cleanser to something else and just didn't really notice the difference immediately and just never went back kind of thing. And I think that my skin benefits from something that is gentler all across the board. And it just never occurred to me to also do that with my body and stuff like that until I met a couple of really great little products recently. So not that recently, but either way. The first one being, this is my body wash, but honestly, if you're kind of a low maintenance person, this could be your face wash too. I'm a high maintenance person, so it is only my face wash in the shower. But I mean, look, it's enormous. It's 13 and a half ounces and it's $18. 
This is from a brand called Prequel. It's a brand new brand. The owner, I think, reached out to me on Shop My Shelf, was really, really excited to send me some stuff and I have been loving it. Oh my God, I also forgot the other thing from Prequel. Hang on. It's all important. <sighs> so yeah, this is called the Glenzer, okay? And it is a 50% glycerin cleanser. And it's big enough that you can very economically use it on your whole body. Like I said, you can also use it on your face, no problem at all. And I used to think that everything had glycerin in it. I was like, well, I mean like, well, how do you call glycerin like a hero ingredient? You know what I mean? Isn't that just the basis of all soap? Uh-uh. I started reading some of the bottles in my shower and it was like, sodium laurid sulfate, sodium laurel hyper, strip your skin. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, I guess glycerin kind of isn't like a no brainer for these companies anymore. I thought that, I literally thought that glycerin was like what soap was made out of. It's not, <laughs> it actually is not. So yeah, it says a non-stripping face and body cleanser formulated with 50% glycerin, inulin, and a unique, I can't tell you how many times I've read this in the shower, a unique aquaporin stimulating active to boost skin suppleness. This skin softening humectant rich cleanser effectively removes makeup, excess oil, and impurities while maintaining skin's natural moisture barrier and pH. I do think it's too gentle to like really get all your makeup off. So that's why I use a separate cleanser is because it's like part of my double cleanse, but there's no reason you couldn't like pull this back out of your shower and use it as your double cleanse. You know, it's just not alone. I think like, you know, enough of a surfactant. It's wildly gentle, like incredibly gentle. That's a selling point for me. Excess oil and impurities while maintaining skin's natural moisture barrier and pH. Added argonine oat extract and aloe soothing comfort designed for all skin types and suitable for dry or easily sensitized skin. They even say that it's safe for uh, eczema prone skin. It is just the gentlest thing. And the main selling point here for me is, I mean, obviously, you know, the product inside, but also it reminds me so much of the Milky Jelly Cleanser from Glossier, except it is $1 less expensive and more than twice the amount of product. It is a wildly good deal compared to the Milky Jelly Cleanser. So if you're a Milky Jelly Cleanser girly, it's fantastic. So yeah, I mean, it's just like, you couldn't ask for something more basic. It doesn't have a smell, just smells like glycerin, which doesn't smell like anything kind of thing. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. If you've got really, really sensitive skin and you can, like, you don't have to feel guilty using this on your whole body, you know? It's $18 for, like, a buttload. The other thing is this Molo okay, khaki, molecular silk amino hydrating cleanser. This is from Allies of Skin, which is not an affordable brand. It's not, but I do have a discount code. They're doing a buy one, get one free on a bunch of stuff right now. And so the discount code is only for 15% off, but when they stop doing that, which I think is pretty soon, maybe in October or something, then it'll go up to 20%. But I have a code for Allies of Skin and I cannot speak highly enough of their formulas. Their stuff is just so lovely. So anyway, this is their cleanser, their actual face cleanser. And this is more, it has more to it, but it is an extraordinarily similar kind of concept of just, you know, this beautiful, glycerin base that is so gentle, but it is a little, I think it's a little bit more effective as like an actual face cleanser. And you can tell it's got some stuff in it, some like other actives and stuff, not like actives, but like effective skincare ingredients in it because it has like a totally different smell, you know, not herbal or anything. It just smells like it does other things. So anyway, it says it has Asta, oh, no, nope, khaki, astaxanthin, astaxanthin, silk amino acids, moringa oil, soft safflower oil, green and white tea as extracts. pH balance cleanser hydrates and brightens as it breaks down daily grime pollution, SPF, and makeup. So I do think that this one actually does a better job of actually breaking down makeup, but still I'm doing a double cleanse anyway. If you're not wearing a ton, ton of makeup, like this all day long, you know? And if you're like me and there are days where you're wearing a full face and you wanna make sure that you get every single tiny bit off of it with your double cleanse, like this, it's so good. It's so good. It's just really, really lovely. And it actually, both of these do such a good job of maintaining my moisture barrier on my skin. I have been forgetting the last couple of nights. Like, I don't know why. I think it was out of sight, out of mind. I forgot the last couple of nights to do my slugging as part of my routine, which is like adding that last layer of something with like petrolatum in it to kind of keep the moisture in. And I, I forgot because my skin didn't feel tight. And so something's working, you know? And I think it's that I'm not stripping my skin as much. So another one from Prequel, 
Can't say enough about it. A bunch of people have commented when I talked about slugging with Vaseline because Vaseline is pretty inconvenient. Like it's just kind of nasty on your skin. It does not like, it's not meant for that. <laughs> I mean, technically it is, but like pillows and Vaseline don't go together. And a lot of people commented like there are more elegant delivery systems for something that's like majority petrolatum than just going with straight petrolatum, you know? And I was like, it's fine, I'm fine, it's fine. But then prequel sent me that and then they also sent me this and it is this skin utility ointment multi-purpose skin protectant petrolatum bisabolol skin barrier support complex and it's just a more elegant version of a petrolatum that is just as effective as covering your face in vaseline at night which by the way is very effective but it's just not as sticky you know and it does a really, really nice job. It actually feels like a skincare product. <laughs> Not like you'd like, you know, stole something from your doctor's office. <laughs> and you know, Natalie also has it, my, my good friend Natalie. And she's like, oh my God, Khaki, put it on your cuticles before bed. It's a game changer because she and I are both just like the dry, 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 driest girls. So anyway, yeah, can't say enough about all this stuff. And you know, Prequel is a very affordable brand. This is a brand new company, like I said, and I think that they're doing cool, cool, stuff. You can tell, I don't know, they've just got kind of like a very current take on like what people want from skincare, especially dry skin. So I've been really enjoying those. And the only other thing that I really need to like scream from the rooftops here is just about my freaking sunscreen. I've tried a lot of sunscreens and there are a lot of really beautiful, elegant formulas out there. Okay. But it's never going to come close to the efficacy of a K-Beauty sunscreen or a J-Beauty sunscreen. This is made in Korea. This is the Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel from Isentry. And I started using this and they sent it to me and I was like, whatever, it's a sunscreen. You know, I put it on and I was mainly just looking at like what it looked like on my skin. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty, it's dewy, whatever. Like I have tons of sunscreens. But then I went to visit Ingrid and this was like, I don't know, two months ago or something, something like that. She was like, we need to go to this, you know, adorable, Asian skincare store in Chinatown so that I can get my sunscreen. And turns out this is what she was picking up. And I was like, oh, is it good? And she's like, oh, it's very good. And um, Ingrid looks ageless, like ageless, you know, <laughs> like no Botox, no nothing, just smooth, even looking skin. And I'm just like, I'll have what she's having. You know what I mean? And I started using this and I, it's, affordable, you know, it's like, I don't know, on Amazon, I think it was like $17, something like that. Amazon's prices change all the time, but like it's nowhere near as expensive as US-based sunscreens, you know, that are all $35, $40 and up, right? This is a lot more affordable. Like I don't feel wasteful using the full like three fingers worth of it and you know really covering myself in it and it's elegant enough that it then i'm wearing it right now and it goes on under makeup you know you can put a ton of it on and it still goes on under makeup the whole spiel you know i'll truncate it but it's like we just don't have as sophisticated of like sun protection filters in our ingredients that are approved in the US because the US regulates SPF as a pharmaceutical and something like Korea or you know other countries will regulate it like a cosmetic and so it doesn't have to go through as much testing and so it actually like allows for more innovation basically it just like opens up for more innovation and so that's why they're just so good and it took me a really long time to figure it out but like the results freaking speak for themselves i have been peeling the crap out of my skin lately and what that does is it makes your skin actually more sensitive like you know it's kind of this little rat race right if you're not using good enough sunscreen then you could actually be doing more harm than good because you're making your skin more sensitized like i try and stay out of the sun but you can't always stay out of the sun and this has kept my skin from repigmenting okay <laughs> okay like I bought it I bought it again I ran out of it I bought two more like I have a brand new one and another one laying in wait like this is my sunscreen now and it's not as wild like it's a lot of hyaluronic acid it's, it's uh, eight different types of hyaluronic acid but it doesn't give you that like weird super slippy finish oh my goodness gracious y'all so those are my skincare things and my hair care things and my body care things and now we will chat about makeup this is the the final boss, but it's a really big one. So I guess let's crack into complexion, shall we? It should come as absolutely no surprise to anyone that this is like the top of my top shelf. This is the Prada Reveal Foundation. I want to apologize to everyone for being wrong when I guessed that based on their post on Instagram, when they said that it's coming to their website September 1st, that that meant that it was gonna come to their website September 1st. 
apparently that didn't mean anything because it's not there yet. So I ordered mine from Selfridges in the UK. I paid $35 to get it to me on top of the price of the foundation. And I do not recommend that you do that, okay? But when it does come into stock anywhere in the United States, run do not walk, okay? If you have the same taste as me and you like a medium coverage with like the most beautiful, like blissful finish to it. It's like this perfect, just slightly better than skin finish. It just gives this like glycerin sort of smoothness, but it's like lighter than air. Prada did the thing on this one, okay? It's just good. It's just good. And you can, I'm gonna say this, and I hope nobody nobody smites me dead here, but like you can forego all of my Chanel recommendations for this. I'm still gonna talk about my Chanel foundations, but I think if I had to go and buy brand new everything and I was only gonna pick like one foundation, I would pay the $35 shipping again. <laughs> to get this to me from Selfridges, okay? It's just, there's like, it's almost like there's no point in having other stuff. Like, am I wearing it today? No, because I'm testing other things, but like, for my collection, she's the one. She's the one. It's caribou. Okay, so the one that I'm trying today, and you know, I'm gonna get my thoughts on it, but it is a little bit more of a satin finish. It's getting a little bit more like, you know, that 90s moving towards like matte. It's not quite so like slick looking as some of my other ones. And this is my Chanel Vita Lumiere Aqua that I finally got my hands on and I think it's so pretty. I like something that kind of gives me the option. It sort of reminds me of like the Fenty Ease Drop, except it is hydrating. I, like, I don't think it's my favorite, favorite thing currently. I don't. Like, I, I think that, you know, it's probably going to be eclipsed by other things in my, even in my Chanel repertoire, but it's top shelf right now because I'm intrigued. I'm just intrigued because I'm always here to see if there's the potential for me to like something new. And it's very different. It's just, it's light as air. It's absolutely beautiful. It's super liquidy, but it does have a little bit more of like a mattified finish to it, which could make it something that like is fantastic for photographing. Cause there's always going to be different instances that you might need a different foundation for it. even though I have found something that I absolutely adore that doesn't mean I'm ever gonna stop testing foundations because I enjoy it I love it even if I hate it like that's a discovery it's just it's a fun thing for me so anyway I also tend to kind of gravitate towards Chanel foundations in terms of what I want to test because I know what shade I am in Chanel all the time like I'm always B10 so it's like nice it just takes one factor out of the equation so I have been really enjoying the Vita Lumiere Aqua I think that like I said it's very very pretty it's just unusual like it's just different for me, but it's beautiful. And they all wear so long. That's what I love about a Chanel foundation. They all wear. And they're just great for dry skin. So it's like a mattifying, not mattifying, a, a more like satin finish for dry skin. And they, the whole point, the khaki, was that they took the octanoxate out. Hell yeah. I also love this. I wanted to mention this because as I have almost finished the Sublimage Le Tain from Chanel, I think, and we will have to wait to see, you know, in my future top shelf videos, as it actually gets cold and dry outside, we're going to, you know, test them against each other because I do have enough of it left that I can get like a good test of it. I stopped using it in the spring, not the one that I'm holding, the one in the tub. Stopped using it in the spring because once it started getting warm outside, my it got too sludgy. I needed it for my extraordinarily dry winter skin, but after that it did get too wet, essentially. And so I picked this up at the Chanel Atelier when I was there a few weeks ago, and this is the Sublimage Le Sens Détente. And I, I'm not going to say it. Like it's, I, I might switch to this. Like I might like it better than the original Sublimage, but we will have to see when the dry skin fairy comes, okay? when she comes to take my moisture in the night <laughs> like we'll see but this is just so much lighter weight and it's just so much thinner and it's just easier to use the other one is just like so thick with two c's that i don't know i don't know we'll see but like if you it's more of a year-round version of it let's put it that way like i think that if you don't have like wildly wildly dry skin needs this is a much more approachable version of that formula that gives you the same effect and i it's so good. And if you uh, are playing along at home, you also know that like this one is the other one that I can't stop. Like it's three Chanel foundations. 
why am I like this? It's just how I was born. I don't know, but this is the original, the Healthy Glow. No, oh, the glow is just so good. It's just so good and it's more coverage than either of those. So it is truly, especially when my skin looked like absolute hot garbage. Like when I was initially doing the retinol purge, hot garbage. Like I was not trying to achieve some kind of like dewy effortless look. I was like, cover it up. And like, this isn't like Estee Lauder double wear or something, but it'll cover and it looks like skin and it's gorgeous. And B, actually this is the one where I feel like B10 and BD01, I mix them together because I feel like the, like the ones that I have for whatever reason, this B10 is different from other B10s. I don't know why. It still works, but also because I've been absolutely like scorching my skin with retinol to great results, I, my complexion is lightened up. And so I do want to go a little bit fairer with my complexion products, especially going into winter. So I think that's it too. So anyway, recap here. Absolutely gorgeous version of the sublimage that's gonna give you that like glow, you know, but it's easier for more people to wear for more of the year, I think, than the original sublimage they taught, and it's not in a tub, okay? Because I know a lot of people got a problem pulling makeup out of a tub. Vita Lumiere is going to be more satin finish. So beautiful, great for photographing, and I still don't have my thoughts completely, completely together on it, but I like it, I do. And I'm glad I got it and they took the octanoxate out. Le Beige Healthy Glow Foundation, more coverage if your skin needs it. Cause yikes, did I need it and I probably will again at some point. It's just excellent stuff. It'll make me feel so confident no matter what my skin is doing. And then the Prada, it's like, maybe it doesn't have quite as much coverage as I would want on like my worst skin day. Okay, okay, I'll give you all that. It might not be perfect in every instance and I know I'm just completely blowing it out of proportion but it's like exactly what I would design in a foundation. I think that that's, that's it. But you can't get it right now, if you're in the United States. We will all keep each other posted. And then, <laughs> something that's not wildly expensive. Wow, I know, the Yummy Skin from Danessa Myers, her newer complexion product, the Serum Skin Tint. It's just so good, y'all. It's just so good. It's less coverage than any of that that I just talked about. And it is truly so, yummy on the skin. It's really, really beautiful. And it does have a lot more coverage than like that hourglass skin tint and stuff that have been coming out lately. You know, I'm all for it. I'm all for that really lovely, beautiful, dewy, glycerin-y finish. But my skin was looking like absolute hot garbage between the like purge and also like the pigmentation and everything. And this gave me enough coverage that like my freckles didn't look gray. It made me feel a lot more confident and this is not a widely expensive product and it does have a great shade range. I wear shade two. I love this so much. I love this so much. All right, I only have, lucky for y'all, a couple of concealers to talk about. And one is not shocking at all. I, I, I don't even wanna say I fell out of love with this, but I tested a bunch of other concealers besides the new, or it's not even new anymore. This is the Prism Libre Skin Caring Concealer from Givenchy. I tested a bunch, I came back around, and like, this is still my favorite, okay? It's just still so good. And you know what I love it for? Is like sometimes when I need to really get my butt out the door, you can wear it like a foundation. And it's not just like, oh, it's making do, like it's gorgeous as a foundation. It's gorgeous. <laughs> and it's the same price as any other like luxury foundation. It's $100 an ounce, which is less than you pay for, you know, a Chanel foundation. So it's just, it's so, it's so nice. It's so hydrating. It's so smoothing. It's so blurring. It's the perfect amount of coverage. It's kind to my skin. I, my under eyes love it. It's just kind of idiot proof for me. And I just think it's great. So I have talked about this nonstop. I'm not going to like bend your ear about it anymore, but like it's, so excellent. This is my opportunity in these videos to tell y'all, like, even though you haven't seen something as much on camera lately because I've been testing other things, like, this is still an absolute favorite mainstay in my life. That's the case with the Givenchy. I just, it's... I keep waiting for it to disappoint me and it just doesn't. And the other concealer is actually new. I just... Thank the world of these. These are the new Tower 28 ones. And we are, we're kind of diminishing, you know, in price, which is nice. I think these are only like 20 bucks, $22, something like that. The shade range, while the names seem kind of wild, it does seem like there's a pretty good shade range. This is so lightweight and it is so illuminating and gorgeous without being like actually like reflective and shiny. Wow, these are pretty. Wow, these are pretty, especially like, I'm talking about, you know, myself as like a 36 year old woman, you know, like you would think of something at this price point being like, yeah, it's gonna look great on Gen Z, sure, but like everything does. No, 
this is really, really lovely, elegant. Like it feels like it was made in Korea or something. Do you know what I mean? It's like, no, made in Italy. But regardless, it's just, it's like that kind of X factor. You know, the intangibles of like when you're looking at it, you're like, that just looks better. That just looks better. It has its own dry down. It's super lightweight, it's super thin, it's hydrating, but it has its own dry down so you don't have to powder it. It's really, really pretty. And I just, I love that there's something that I can gush about like this that isn't $50, you know what I mean? Like there's just something really nice about that just from my standpoint. It's, they, these have really impressed the hell out of me. What do I have on my eyes right now? The new Kosas palette. Kind of just tease that for y'all. <laughs> Oh gosh, something that I didn't mention that kind of goes before foundation. I mean, is anybody shocked that I'm talking about this? These are the Chanel LeBlanc Eclat Rosé Sur Mesure. Rosy light drops. I just, I like trying the French. My French is awful. This is what I put on my face before my foundation a lot of times where I mix it with it. You can also use it as like a, a highlighter on top or whatever. What I like about this for me specifically, because this does come in several shades, like there's a bronzy one and probably, I don't know, there might be like an icier one. I'm not totally sure. There's at least two. I know there are at least two. This is color correcting for me, which is so nice. It kind of gives like Becca under eye corrector wherever I put it. Just so stinking pretty. I like it so much and I put it all over my face and it smells like Chanel. And I like when things smell like Chanel. I don't know, it's just good. It's just really good. And I don't use it all the time because a lot of times I am testing foundations and you don't want to sully the scientific results by putting on something that you know, not only you love, but also that has a very distinct appearance to it that can really change the way a foundation looks. You don't wanna put that on in every video kind of thing. So that's why you don't see it as much, but I use it every excuse I can make basically. Oh, what have we, what have we, what have we? Gosh, let's talk about blush next. I am so sorry, they're all Chanel. <laughs> okay, they're not all Chanel, but it's, there's so much Chanel in this. No, we're gonna move into other things, I promise, but if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't, that's all I can say. I'm wearing the coral one today and that is the only blush that I'm wearing, you know, on top of my bronzer. But these are the new fall collection. Did I think when I saw these on Trend Mood or whatever, that I was going to be just head over heels in love with them? No. Am I head over heels in love with them? Yes. Like I've killed the embossing on this one and I've just totally like messed up the color duality here. Like I am just being an absolute kid playing in the mud with these. I I love them. I love them. I don't think you can get the mauve one right now. Maybe they'll make some more, but like the Ducer de Equinox, basically. Harmony blushes, uh, blush harmony. <laughs> but yeah, this is the mauve one and this is the coral one. <laughs> I have so many like French speaking friends at this point and they're all just like khaki stop <laughs> Stop it. But anyway, yeah, I Just think the world of these this puts the most unbelievable Cool toned glow on the skin. That's just like oh right in there with my lip color It is definitely the mood that the new collection with finding Ferdinand is going towards this season the my fall winter collection is gonna be unabashedly cool toned. It will be things that you don't own. Y'all asked for a cool tone collection and we made a cool tone collection, okay? It is cool in both ways. It is cool tone and it is also extremely cool. So I'm so excited to share it with y'all. But yeah, I mean, like the way that that look ended up so cool toned, I mean, I'll go ahead and cover the lipstick that went with it too because <laughs> It's Chanel. So this is the Rouge Coco Flash in Boy, and I wore it with that mauve blush, and it was so good. It was so good together! Because, yeah, it was just like this grayish thing. It was like unabashedly cool tone. So like fearlessly taupe that it was really inspiring for me, and that's the feeling that I've been chasing lately with those, so I'm really enjoying those. Really enjoying them. And honestly, like the feedback in the comments, people were like this pumping. They were like, Yes, yes, cool tone khaki, let's go, let's freaking go. And then the coral, I mean, you know, who's surprised? It's so beautiful. And when I put it on my eyes, it looked vaguely threatening, so there's that. And girl math for you, I always like to do the girl math. You know, they, they sold out these compacts that were $45. You just pay $20 more and get one with a blush inside. So like, it's a $20 blush. Y'all, I just bought the most beautiful pair of Frida Salvador boots. Like I actually like 
died briefly. Like I stopped breathing when I saw them. I was like, oh, mm. and my friend Emily's an enabler and she was like, oh, those are gonna sell out. You better buy those. And I was like, okay. But also um, I had bought this really expensive sweater on sale at Jenny Kane for Labor Day. And when I put it on, I wore it for like an hour and I started getting this rash around my neck. And I was like, oh no, it's got some kind of like wool or something that's like really, really aggravating my skin. And so I was like, <laughs> girl math. And I just like returned that and bought the boots. And my friend Hallie was like, they were free. <laughs> Love girl math. So anyway, let's cover the rest of the like cheek stuff real quick. And then I have to step off and record the podcast. And when I come back, I might be in a different outfit. What? That was fast. What? I have a highlighter in my top shelf. What? But technically it is a highlighting blush, but this is the new gen nude highlighting blush from Bare Mouth. And it's so good. I'm wearing a highlighter today. If you're new to my channel, the, the emphasis in my voice, I'm being so emphatic because I don't wear highlighter. I don't care about highlighter. Like highlighter is just like not on my rear. I'm like, who cares? I don't want a weird icy stripe on my face. This is gorgeous. And I used it on my inner corner. I just think it's great because there's no glitter no glitter and it's got enough color to it without being dark, like too dark to use as a highlight. It's got enough color to it that it's like when I turn my head, you still see blush, but it's just like blurring. It's so blurring. I'm so into it. Like it's really pretty. It's $26 and I'm so glad that I just took the leap and got it because it's so good. It's so good. Is anybody going to be shocked about this? Absolutely not. <laughs> I have lost the embossing on this now. This is the newer uh, Uma Double Take Sculpt and Bronzing Powder. Holy macaroni, y'all. If for fair skinned people, I mean, it's a great shade range. Anybody could probably find something to like about it. But for fair skinned people looking for a truly fair skinned, fair toned, light toned bronzer, it's almost a setting powder on me but it's so like even and flattering and beautiful. It just looks so at home and I can apply it with reckless abandon. It's one of those like makeup products from formula to shade. And also, I mean, the component is beautiful. It's so like sleek and elegant and like just nice to interact with. The whole experience just feels so easy and the ease of it makes it fun because you're putting it on you're like, this looks great. This looks great. It doesn't even feel like I'm trying. Like, yes, Uma. They have really, especially this year, risen as like one of my absolute favorite brands. The only reason the concealer is not in here today is just because like, I just haven't been using it as much lately because I don't have as much coverage need. And I was like, eh, I don't need to keep it out right now. But like their formulas are off the charts. They're so good. And even the Uma by Sharon C at Walmart, <laughs> drive it like you stole it. Like that stuff is really, really good too. Those eyeshadows, awesome. The other bronzer, I mean, you can tell, you can tell all of these have been so loved. And I always say this, but like, I would never use this on the basis of what it looks like, okay? Cause that looks like drugstore and it's definitely not drugstore price. But this is the LH Cosmetics Bronzer. And it is one of the most deliciously silky formulas I have ever used on my face. Like it's so nice. It's not like Surratt, but it's like a different kind of equally exquisite silkiness. And yeah, so this is the LH Cosmetics Infinity Bronzer in Always. And it is enough, it's like more actually bronzy on me, but it is still such an effective, like native color to my skin. And I think this comes in either four or five shades, but it is just very, 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 very good. Like if I'm willing to interact with a package that looks like this to use this product on a regular basis, it's that good because I am such an aesthetic snob. And then the only other cheek product that I have in here, you know, I, I, there are things that I use every single day. I'm not gonna show you my Victoria Beckham bronzing brick because Natalie has made me feel really self-conscious about it. She's like, I'm going to buy you a new pan because that's unacceptable. Cause I like traveled with it and it broke. So anyway, yeah, I just wanted to like briefly touch on and thank y'all for all of the amazing feedback on the Finding Ferdinand collab with the blushes and the lip gloss because it has just been such a pleasure. We learned so much. Wow. And like the limitations of Shopify. Wow. There are so many things that we're going to be solving in this next drop y'all. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. And the, you know, it's not going to be too, too long for y'all to wait, but it is going to be like more of a fall release, but either way, like, it was, especially for our first release, especially for like the hiccups and things like that, like best day of my life. 
just so wonderful. And I have been so enjoying like seeing so many skin tones and so many people and so many different ways of doing their makeup and stuff like that, enjoying these and them looking just absolutely killer on y'all, you know? So, you know, I'm not, I have no idea what we're going to do in terms of ever bringing this back. There is going to be at the end of the month, a like last chance. They did like an overage on everything so that y'all could do like a last chance if you didn't get it this time, but that might be it. And we will just have to see, maybe it'll come out again next summer or maybe we'll do another summer collection or something. But like, I would get while the getting's good on that, but there will also be a beautiful, beautiful fall collection. So look forward to that. It's just, yeah, y'all really made my whole existence with that. So thank you. I'm over the moon grateful, ridiculous. Like just off the charts. <laughs> also, if you loved this, Oh, mm, yum, lip gloss formula. You're gonna have some more options. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, I must dash so that I can uh, do the pod and I will be back with y'all in just a bit to talk about the last few things. It might be tomorrow. <laughs> It is the next day, welcome to it. I have a few other things that I wanted to touch on before we close this video out, because I know it's probably pretty long at this point, but I have been, I'm not sure that I've had a top shelf video since I've been able to like talk about these. Like I was using them before they came out and then they finally came out, etc. So Oma has put out their contour stick in a single and their highlight stick in a single, beautiful shade range, beautiful formula. I've loved it for a really long time, years. And the fact that it is now in a single situation is just so nice. I think they did a beautiful job with the packaging. It's giving, you know, Westman Atelier in a very beautiful modern way. I think that they did an immaculate job with this. And so that has definitely stayed out. Another thing, I can't shut up about this. Like I can't shut up about it. Like I am fully swept up in the fantasy and it's just such a well-conceived and well-executed entire product. So this is the Rouge Volupte Candy Glaze from YSL and this is just in shade two. It's clear, it's so glossy. It sticks around. It doesn't give you a white ring of death. It's just good, it's so good. And it comes in a bunch of really beautiful colors. I did buy another shade in it, but like, this is the one, this is the one. I just never am upset that I put it on and it lasts for so long. And you know, sure, is it a clear gloss? Yeah, but like A, what am I gonna use the most? What am I gonna get the most use out of? A clear gloss in my entire collection. Like I know myself, but also like, it's just an experience, you know? That's just a really lovely experience, holding that in my hand and using it. And like, if I'm gonna use a clear gloss, it's really nice to be interacting with one that's this luxurious. So yeah, this is one of those things that like, I'm gonna use it up and then I'm gonna buy it again. It's just a mainstay. It's like one of those things that you just kind of keep in your routine forever. So yeah, a top shelf permanently. <laughs> I have been reaching for this so much and I put all the other shades away in their drawer and this is the one that I kept out and it is the new RMS shade crystal slipper in their Redimension Hydra Powder Blush. It's just a really good in-between shade for fair skin. I'm not saying like other people can't wear it, but it's a little bit fairer than Maiden's Blush and I just find it really easy to wear. You know, it's like halfway between a blush and a bronzer and it's very, very good for as fair as my skin has been lately. I can really like pile it on with Reckless Abandon. And the comments that I got on my Bare Minerals video where I was maybe possibly postulating that the bronzers, the new bronzer shades weren't performing as well as I remembered because of the performance of the foundation, because I didn't really like the performance of the foundation. A lot of people commented and they were like, actually, no, that it does stamp pretty badly. And I had compared it to the RMS formula in that video. And I have to say like, if that's the case, then I would recommend the RMS ones over the bronzers. They are similar, like they do feel similar when you like, you know, rub your finger in them or put them on or whatever. And they both have a really nice kind of blurring sheen to them. But the RMS ones, I feel like are in more intuitive shades for me. And they just kind of, you know, run a larger gamut of actual shades and they're easier to work with. I do think that like they have enough shades with enough punch to them that like a lot of different skin tones, if not every skin tone could find something in there that they like that would show up on them in a flattering way. And also it's just a really easy to use formula, way more so than you would think for something like this. So yeah, I've been really enjoying this and it's refillable. I did, y'all know I've always loved the Hourglass eyeshadow, the Scattered Light eyeshadow in Ray and mine has broken apart. I need to repress it. It wouldn't take much to do that, but 
I did end up picking up Blaze, which is this beautiful, very balanced copper. And it's what I have on my eyes right now. And it does, it goes like this really nice, it's like a copper with a touch, touch of rosiness to it. So it doesn't look kind of blindingly red on my skin. I, I just really like it. I feel like it makes brown eyes pop, but I mean, obviously copper is gonna make light eyes pop too. I just wanted to say, I loved this enough that I bought another one and I have no regrets. <laughs> okay, and last thing here, you notice that the Prada eyeshadow palettes didn't make it in. I like them, but I felt no qualms putting them back. That's basically the way that Top Shelf chooses itself is like, am I gonna forget that they exist? No. But do I wanna keep them out for fear that I might forget that they exist? No, you know? So the thing that I did keep out, I love this. Now granted, I don't know how much of this I'm gonna be using as we get into winter because it is just such a coral color, but this is the Prada monochrome. It's like the less matte, like they have like a really strong matte and then they have like a cream matte or something. And this color is ridiculous. Like every time I wear it, I'm so glad that I did. I was so scared it was going to give, I found this in my grandmother's back, you know, the back of her bathroom drawer or something, you know, it like that kind of like church lady coral. <laughs> I'm from the South, like it's, it's definitely a reference that resonates with me. But there's something really modern about it and the wear time on it is wild. Especially if you blot it, like it's so gorgeous blotted. So gorgeous, it blots so evenly. It looks so just like soft and effortless on the lips for a matte color. And by the way, this color is 176. I think that it sold out initially and then I probably back in stock somewhere. I know that the lipsticks, you can still get those in the US. So the blotted appearance of it is so beautiful. It's so even and it wears for so long. So it's like, I don't have any anxiety about wearing a bold lip. So I can speak to the formula about having a bold lip on because a lot of times that's the anxiety around a bold lip is you're like, well, I have to keep reapplying it. For a bullet lipstick, it is like, really, really long wearing. I am so, so pleased with it. And I just love the component. Like the whole situation is so nice. And I have been really just going headlong into luxury lipsticks. So that's been my jam lately. Bear that in mind. That's the context I've been in. That doesn't mean you need to go be obsessed with them, but like that's where I've been at lately. And that one really impressed me. So those are my top shelf items for this, you know, amount of time that it's been since the last one y'all. And it has been like a wild turnover. There are some familiar faces, but like there's a lot of really cool, new, exciting stuff. And I have been, I feel like having really good luck lately, you know, just like interacting with a lot of stuff that's really solved some problems for me and continue to like get me excited about makeup again and excited about beauty again. I feel like we had a lull over the summer and maybe even not even a seasonal lull. It was just like kind of a lull in general. Me and Tom were just talking about the podcast yesterday. We were like, I'm like getting invigorated about beauty again. And it feels great. You know, like there's just exciting stuff on the market. And even when stuff isn't exciting, sometimes it's just fun to talk about. <laughs> That will be soon, that will be soon. But yeah, y'all, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please check out the link down below to shop at Current Body. Again, you can get 15% off with my code and that code gets you an additional $50 off of the neck and deck device, which I can't recommend highly enough. So get all of your anti-aging things taken care of. It's the best deal on an anti-aging LED device I've seen in a long time, so definitely check it out. I'll put a video up here that I think that y'all are going to like. If you have not subscribed already, please do subscribe while you are here. Cool people subscribe. It'd be cool if you did. And I love you all so much. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.